I am trying to save 500 dogs in four days. <laughs> I know. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Maria, and usually this channel is about my dog, Blue and I's life, traveling the country, doing all 50 states, we're on a road trip, living out of my Land Rover Defender 110. That's usually what we're doing. Last month, I was traveling through Utah, and I came across a stray mama dog and her puppy. Some of you guys may remember. Is there someone we can call for those dogs, or is that pretty common to have strays outside? Somebody probably dropped them off, and they just came inside, probably they're kind of hungry. Okay, thank you. Hi, guys, you want food? You guys want food? Come here. Come on, puppies. Come on. Yeah, hey, mama. Look. Come here, look. Good luck, you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Crap, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? This mama dog is literally following the truck. Oh, what do I do? Can I... You guys, it's safe to say it devastated me, okay? I knew I needed to do something in my family. Listen, you don't just talk about it, you be about it if you see something like that. I put my good family raising to the test. I wanted to work with people who were on the front lines every single day, because clearly this was my first experience with res dogs, with stray dogs. I didn't know much about it, so I got in contact with Underdog Rescue in Moab, Utah. This organization is a non-profit, no-kill shelter. These people are amazing. They are incredible. I can't even... I can't even begin to describe the grit and the passion that they have for these kinds of dogs. They're in the Four Corners area, specifically serving the reservations in that area, trying to tackle the 500,000 strays that are currently suffering there. Later in the video, you guys will see me touring Underdog, meeting the residents, and also walking some of them as well. But first, we need to get educated here. One thing I really wanna do in this series, besides raising money for Underdog to get to the root of this issue to hopefully eradicate it someday, more on that later, and how we're gonna do that, and how this fundraiser is gonna help them do that. But I really wanna educate everybody on what the issues are, how this all happened, how it's going, what people like you and me can do that aren't in that area every day, aren't on the front lines dealing with these dogs. How can we help them solve this issue? So I sat down with the world's sweetest baby angel, Amber. I love Amber, okay? I'm Amber's biggest fan. Amber, if you're watching, I miss you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So we sat down so she could give us more information on what's going on and how we can help. Okay, your biggest job is to make sure it doesn't fall. Okay. Yeah, heard. Okay, <laughs> we should start with who you are okay. and what you do and how long you've been here. Okay, perfect. So my name is Amber. Um, I am the clinic and intake manager here at Underdog and I've been here about two and a half years now. My main role is I coordinate all of our vaccine and spay and neuter clinics. I also am in charge of our intake list. We do have a wait list of dogs needing to come in, so I have to prioritize by like injury, pregnant, if they're safe where they are, that kind of thing, and then get those dogs in when we can. Why is there such a stray dog population and how big is it? Because I don't think people realize how big it is. Mm -hmm. And so just on the Navajo Nation alone, there's a reported about 500,000 strays, which is like nuts. You can't even like imagine, you know? Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of things that contribute to this, but I think the biggest thing is lack of access to veterinary care. So these dogs are just like reproducing constantly, litter after litter, without veterinary services, like how do you stop that, you know? Yeah. So I think that is definitely one of the biggest issues. We've also been seeing problems with folks that like can't afford to keep their dogs or have dogs that just wandered up to their property. So without having other um, options, they're dumping the dogs at like gas stations or visitor centers on the side of the road. Um, so that, that also definitely contributes to it. And like the root of it kind of is the poverty too, right? Yeah, definitely. So the poverty, again, with the lack of access, can you imagine like from where we were, like where would you work? 
Yeah. Like, what would you even do for that? Work? That's what I was asking. Like, there wasn't even running water. So, like, exactly. how did they survive there? So, so many families haul water um, and wood to burn and things like that. So, it's just like a really, really low income area that we're trying to help get these services because there's no other alternative. So really you just need more vets? We need more vets for sure, yeah. Um, vets is like one thing that we're always asking for. If they want to come and do a weekend with us on the res, it's super fun. We bust out like 200 spay and neuters in a weekend. Yeah. And it's just really awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. So Underdog's mission is mostly focused on helping pets and families on the Navajo Nation and surrounding reservations. Of course, we do also um, adopt out dogs and, you know, love to help them find their forever homes. But I feel like a really big part of our mission is to help animals stay with their families. So I think that's one of the, the sides of underdog that's not really seen like on our social media and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of something I wanted to highlight is that we are offering, you know, Native American families, these services, pet food donations, dog houses, whatever they need to help them keep their animal. Um, because we know that they are family and we don't think that that should be a reason that they can't stay with them if they, you know, can't pay for dog food or something like that. We take in a ton of like medical cases. That's a really big um, thing that's like close to our heart is we yeah. Since I've worked here, we've never turned away a medical case, mm -hmm. and that can range anything from like um, cancer, amputation, porcupine quills, liver shunts, like we've seen so many different things. And so we get those dogs healthy, we do everything that we can, um, and then we let them go on and find their adopters and live really yeah. awesome lives. Yeah, in a yeah. no-kill shelter. We are a no-kill no -kill shelter, yes, definitely. So. The dogs that we have long term that you have met, unfortunately, in other shelters, those dogs would be euthanized. Yeah. Um, you know, they're they're hard to adopt if they're dog selective. We just we don't really believe in that. How fast can a dog reproduce? Like, mm, just to put it in gosh. perspective. Um. Yeah. Generally, a, a female dog can get pregnant every six months. And then how old did that have to be to get pregnant the first time? I believe it's around five to six months. Five months? A five-month-old puppy can get pregnant? I think so, but now I'm like really <laughs> fact-checking. <laughs> around six months is like typical of when a dog can get pregnant. But then, so, so a dog has a litter, yes. and then the female's in that litter, so six months later the mom can get pregnant again, and her puppies and all puppies, can get pregnant yeah. at that same time. And then each of those puppies are having, you know... So in a year, the mom could be having a litter with her grandbabies. Yes. Yeah. That's <laughs> It's crazy, and that's like how fast it is, you know? Yeah. And so that's why... Um, of course, our main goal is like going to the source and spaying and neutering all these animals that we can before it gets to that point. Because the core of the issue is the massive reproduction of these reservation dogs, the way Underdog Rescue can really get to the root of it is by spaying and neutering as many as possible. Now, there are hurdles they have to jump over, one being they don't really have many vets in the area, two, the reservations are hours away from Underdogs. What's cool though is that Underdog just received a mobile spay and neuter van, so they can actually take this van, it's called the Fido Fixer, I believe. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong, but they can take this van, drive to the reservations, and do massive spay and neuter clinics, and just get a ton of dogs done and altered at one time. However, they are in dire need of funding to get this rig on the road because there's so much medical supplies that they need to buy to be able to put on these spay and neuter clinics. I think the figure they gave me originally was like $23,000 and some change to, in order to start doing these spay and neuter clinics on the road. I set our fundraiser goal at $25,000 because I just want to cover everything for them. That is the entire intention of this series of the next four videos. I just want to get this covered for them so that they can start getting to the root of the problem. 500,000 stray dogs suffering and dying every day. The lifespan of a res dog, I think they said was two years on average because there's just no access to vet care. They are starving, they're suffering. There's a lot of things that they have to overcome to even make it to two years. Please, please, please consider donating to this fundraiser. Please consider doing this for these dogs. Keep in mind, Every single dollar that you donate will be given to Underdog Rescue. YouTube does not take a cut. All money goes directly to Underdog Rescue. Do it for the puppies, come on. So like, what is the single most helpful thing? Somebody can only give you one thing. What are you wanting? Are you wanting like your top priorities? Like, 
foster? Is it? I mean, if someone can only give us one thing, money, money. money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Because that's what I was like trying to raise for you guys, but it's like it's better for you to get something else. No, I would say money because most of our funds go to medical care. Yeah. Um, and staffing, honestly, like. Our adoptions have dropped a lot in the past year, um, like most shelters have, and technically, Why? like we can't really afford the staff that we have right now. Oh, really? <laughs> um, so staffing is a huge thing. Um, I think people. So the come down to COVID, though. Yeah, going back to work regularly and kind of picking up with their lives, and we're getting like. I mean, not specifically here, but um, most shelters are seeing a lot of returns because people are like, oh, like, actually, I'm not going to be home as much, right? You don't have the time to take care of this dog or, you know, whatever. So mm -hmm. one thing is I found out the average cost per dog, yeah. which is about $463. <laughs> I was going to guess $500 yeah. per dog. And then your adoption fees is really, really low. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's about $463 per dog to have them in our care. Our adoption fees for puppies are $275 and adults are $175. And that is to make it accessible for everyone to adopt. I think one of the cool things about our shelter is that we don't um, create extra boundaries for people to adopt. You know, some yeah. people have come to us and been like, oh, I tried to adopt a dog, but I live in a van, so they rejected me. And we're like, that dog's gonna have an awesome life. Like, yeah. that sounds great. So, um, we really want, you know, to make that accessible for everybody, but it doesn't cover nearly the expenses that we put into the dog. Right. Um, so, yeah, yeah just donating in general, um, everything goes back towards the dogs. Quickly, guys, I gotta do some shout outs because there was a team behind me to get this fundraiser series moving and grooving. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people helping me out here. It's not just me. Firstly, I want to thank Sundays for Dogs who jumped at the opportunity to help me and partner up with me for this video series. Because of them, we were able to do some really cool stuff that you'll see later on. Like we bought out a grocery store's worth of dog food for people on the reservation. We also were able to pay for adoptions in advance for some of the longest term residents at Underdog Rescue. And they've also pledged to send a bag of their dog food to anybody who does an adoption through Underdog Rescue for the next month. So if you see any dogs that you like and you want to go adopt one this month, I'm just saying, you'll also get a free bag from Sundays for Dogs. They have a really great product that was founded by vets themselves. It's human grade ingredients and it's air dried, not frozen. So you have incredible quality dog food without having to take up freezer space. I'll be leaving a link down below for more information. Like I said, they really jumped at the opportunity to help us when they heard I was working on the series to help save these dogs. So I'm very, very thankful to the brand. I'm very grateful. Thank you, Sundays for Dogs. Also, my friends Nick and Cena traveled both across the country from separate directions to meet me in Moab to do this. They were not only volunteers at clinics with me, they were manual laborers. They were my planners, my supporters, my motivators, my videographers as well. I'm really appreciative that they came out and helped me because the manpower was needed. Nick and Cena, thank you so much. You guys know I love you. <laughs> All right. You guys have been educated. We've thanked everybody. We've prepped you for the fundraiser. Let's get into day one, okay? Cena and I were solo on this day because Nick actually didn't come into the series until the last two videos because he was flying in from Florida. So Cena and I were solo on day one and we went to Underdog to have a tour of the facility and to meet all the residents. We also got to take the sweetest girl ever on a walk after the tour. I'm just saying, you're gonna wanna adopt that one, okay? Why is it so pretty here? Look at that. from an old leg injury. So he's a little limpy, um, but he's a total sweetie. Um, Beagles at the very end here, um, she's typically pretty shy. She came to us um, basically with a face full of porcupine um, quills. 
um, which is really painful. It can take, um, you know, months to a couple of years for porcupine quills to work their way out of Are you a dog. Me? Yeah, it's pretty wow. intense. This is Liam. Um, you'll meet her other siblings a little later on. Um, She's she, got an extra toe. She does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because I actually just noticed that about about her the other day and I was like whoa your toes are so weird um, and I learned that it's a it's like a breed thing so um, I think um, Pyrenees was one of the breeds all of our dogs um, are rescued from Native American uh, reservations in the Four Corners area um, and they're all mixed breeds so we yeah. can't guarantee like what a what dog has in it um, but we do have like little hints and cues like that which is really interesting yeah, that's so funny and Watson came to us um, after being in a pretty gnarly um, dog fight um, he was attacked by another dog and the whole back of his neck was basically kind of sliced open it was pretty Aww. gruesome um, but he's doing really well now he's all stitched up his fur's growing back um, so we'll swing over and meet our behavior dogs um, we're gonna stand maybe here-ish um, Olaf is a little reactive to, to new strangers and can get quite loud um, but we've got Big Ben here who just is really shy. Um, a lot of our um, dogs that come to us who need work, they're usually just, they've never had really good human interactions and they just, you know, need to, to learn that people are good um, and people can be good. So, so yeah, Big Ben's a little shy. Um, Cameron's been working really diligently with him and he's been coming along. Blue is actually pretty great. He's just an escape artist, so has to be in a special type of meal. of crocs on each concrete pad um, so we want to keep the soil away from them as much as possible um, we don't want to cross contaminate so anytime anybody goes into a puppy run to feed or to grab a puppy for a meet and greet um, they have to wear special boobies and then um, put on the individual crocs for each is it run. just because they can get like diseases that way mm -hmm. Oh, and they're yeah. more susceptible. And they're more susceptible because um, oftentimes they're not fully vaccinated because they're not old enough to be, um, and their immune systems are quite weak. So, so yeah, we just want to make sure that they stay as safe and protected as possible while they're with us. Gotcha. Um, but we're working on sourcing a foster home for him. Um, Felix and Fatima also working on sourcing a foster home. One-eyed Willie. Um, we thought that he had an eye injury because he had a lot of like discharge around his eye and then um once we were able to clean that out what we realized is he actually is just missing that eye oh um, so kind of just assuming that Aww. he was born without his eye but he's just the cutest little thing <laughs> what a little baby oh, angel you're so sweet so how many dogs do you have here right now so on the ranch we probably have and then we've got another probably 40 or 50-ish in foster. So a lot of the volume in foster is because a lot of litters of puppies go into foster, so that creates pretty right. pretty large volume number. Both have been like sunbathing all day. <laughs> um, we're gonna be one of our long timers, Speedy. How long is a long time? So Speedy's been with us over a year. Why? Yeah. He's waiting on a little bit of kind of a unicorn adopter. He's a really wonderful dog. Mm -hmm. um, He's a little dog reactive or dog selective. Um, a lot of our adopters already have a dog or they have a cat. Um, also statistically, um, he's a pit mix. Um, and statistically, black dogs are less likely to get adopted. Really? Yeah. 
which is really interesting. That is interesting. Um, but Speedy's absolutely wonderful. He's a staff and volunteer favorite. Um, and he's so handsome and so perfect. I need to get Speedy adopted. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Speedy's adoption fee is actually already paid for. So really? it's just the person who comes by and says, I want Speedy um, to take him home. So he's super sweet, super gentle. Get Speedy adopted. Yeah, get Speedy adopted okay. for sure. Yeah. Awesome. That's also awesome that like, so you can pay people's adoption fees ahead of time. Yeah. So how much would that be per dog? Um, so it's 175 for adult dogs and then 275 for puppies. Okay. But there's Speedy. We love you. <laughs> So, Ham, Lonnie, and Briar. Um, Ham is the fluffy guy here. Um, oh and then Lonnie, who I'm in love with, he's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, they're pretty new to us. Um, they've been hanging out with uh, hanging out with us for maybe about two weeks now. Um, and then Briar's been hanging out with us for a couple of months. He's so pretty. I know. <laughs> is he, tell me about his personality. Ham is, he's a ham, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Um, he likes to be brushed. Um, he does pretty well on leash. Um, a lot of our dogs who come in, they don't have any like leash experience. Yeah. Um, so he's been doing pretty well. He's been on on a couple of walks with some volunteers. Yeah. I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna get attached like four dogs and be like, all right. I know. I have a pack now. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that's kind of how it works. <laughs> Historically, I don't like puppies, and I... Uh, Are you okay? <laughs> Camera's cut. No, <laughs> my first week here, um, I was in the adoption room with a couple of puppies, and they were just so, like, off the wall. Yeah. Like, bouncing around, and I was like, I don't think I could handle this if, like, I yeah, had a puppy on my own. It is a and lot. then when they're in, like, when they're in, like, their litter... They like gang up on you, and like their little, <laughs> their little teeth are so sharp, and their little claws are sharp. Yeah. It's like, get away from me. Um, anyway, so so yeah, I was like, puppies aren't for me. Like, I'm just gonna, you know, wait. Yeah. Dragon Squirtle. <laughs> That's so I love that name. Squirtle also um, aged out of the puppy runs. Um, and she, Whoa. her and Spring get along really well. They really like each other. Oh. My friends I'm so sad. They're so cute. They're so cute. Her so cute. ears are just the cutest. And we'll meet Spring's sister um, as well. Okay. Um, Lawrence and Monet back there um, are also Spring's. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. So many snacks. A little bit of uh, kind of a bully when she was with the rest of her litter mates. Oh, so she bully. Had to be separated. Yeah. Dang. That's um, what they call alpha energy, girl. Not yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm a boss babe. <laughs> yeah, you are. And then we have Aquaria here, who's just the sweetest little pit mix. Um, and then Lupita, who is one of my favorites. She's gorgeous. Yeah. So she has, um, she's also pretty new. Um, when she came in, um, she was super stressed out and um, like snapped at somebody bringing her in. Aww. So she came in as a bite risk. Um, she was in the garage for a little while. After a couple of days of deep depression, um, she went from like really timid and shy and like don't touch me, don't come near me, yeah. to I would go in and feed her in the morning and she'd be like really excited to see me and like jumping Just up on me and like pet me, pet me. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm gonna pet you. We're gonna do this. Aw, she's um, so pretty. She gave off all the really good signals of, hey, I'm actually friendly. I was just really stressed out. Yeah. Um, and unsure, but she's. Oh, she's quickly become one of my favorites. Yeah, as well. she's gorgeous. <laughs> wow. And then behind you is Dottie, also Aww. a long timer. Dottie's been with us for over a year, I believe. The thing about like dogs in a shelter or rescue environment is like this is kind of just a snapshot of their personality. Once they get in a home and they get really comfortable and they feel safe, um, they can change and become different. So what we know of Dottie is that she's very vocal and can be very loud. But her in a home environment where she's comfortable and she feels safe they might be totally completely different. different. Yeah. So it's a good girl. What a sweetie pie. Yeah, she totally is. Uh, you guys are all being on your best behavior. I'm like Dottie's the camera. loud. She barks and she's just like, no, I'm not. No, I know. <laughs> like I'm trying to get into a home. I don't know if she. Yeah. Talk about like, me like that for. Like, ah. <laughs> don't say that bad stuff about me. Like that's never been me.
<laughs> not a day in my life. Maybe just around dinner time and breakfast. <laughs> you get I, know, I get like that too, I understand. I know, I do too. I'm like, Gary, feed me! <laughs> yeah. Hangry is Yeah, the exactly. We We're get it, girl. Of it. We get it. So is she the last one then? That's everybody. That's awesome. Yeah, that's everybody here. Hey, I have a question for you guys. We have to wait for like an hour. Can we walk a couple dogs while we wait? Uh, yeah. She'll be a nice easy one for you. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. Yes, Such of course. a pretty face. Yeah. Let's go walk, girl. Oh, she's a sweetheart. Yes, you are. What's up, girl? Oh, look at her, her little back leg. Back leg is covered in feet. But also, look at she's like walking. Yeah, she looks like she just had surgery or something. Look how happy she is. <laughs> Hi. So pretty. There's a road. It's so, she's so precious. I just can't believe these dogs are like that cute and have not been adopted. All the dogs we've met today are all, they've, they've all so been nice. Cute. Even the ones they warned us about. I know. What's up? Oh my god, don't pee on me. She loves you. <laughs> Get her model strut. I wonder what happened. I feel like she had to have like been clipped by a car or something, huh? Probably. Oh, she's dragging too. Wait, I can she's... see her hips standing out right here, though. Okay. Somebody needs to adopt her. Hi, honey. Is it? Is it? I think she's in love with you. Her face, her eyes. That's crazy. Look here. She's so oh. chill too. She's so precious. She loves you. <laughs> If you want to help dogs like Wheatfield, please consider donating even a dollar to this fundraiser. Just think, if every single subscriber of mine or even just every average viewer that I get that isn't subscribed, if you donated just 50 cents, we would blow this goal out of the water. I think people don't realize how little you have to donate to really make a difference. If you're someone like me and you go to Starbucks, please just consider giving that $7 to these stray dogs just once. Like, it helps more than you know. For anyone who is willing or able to donate more, I have a few incentives for you guys. First off, anyone who wants to donate $100 or more, I will be shouting you out in all of the future videos to come. If you're watching this series after everything has been posted though, we will be leaving your name in the description below. For anyone who wants to be a big baller and donate $500 or more, I am going to be getting a plaque made, a metal plaque with everybody's name on it who donates more than $500, and I will be putting it inside post somewhere forever. So if you're a big fan of this channel and you want your name, somewhere up on Poe and you can see it in almost every single video I film from here on out for the rest of my life, <laughs> consider donating to the puppies. Just think, Poe is going to every single one of the 50 states and maybe even international after, okay? So your name could be traveling with, I'm just saying, donate to the puppies, please, please. Okay. Whether you guys donate 50 cents or $500, thank you so much for considering this fundraiser and for helping these strays. It's something I'm very passionate about. It means the world to me, to underdog rescue, and to the dogs themselves. So in the next few videos, we're gearing up to actually get hands-on. It gets pretty wild, so stay tuned. Hi, Pop. You are so cute. My question is, how do people make money out here? Look how skinny they are. We're gonna give them vaccines and tick medicine. Is that okay? Okay. Because they're know. really skinny. I know they are. <laughs> Holy cow, there's like 20 in there. Yeah. Do you want to take medicine? Are we gonna take them? It's the I can't leave them like this.